Hello, and welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro. Today's star of the show is the Individual Computers ACA-1234, which is their 7th Gen 68030 accelerator for the Amiga 1200. And as you can see, I opted to do the self-mod mod, uh, for the FPU upgrade, as well as, as I uh, turn around here, there we go, the Wirelink mod, which will help uh, improve the compatibility of some demo scene demos, the Amiga demo scene that is, demos on the Amiga 1200, so it will improve compatibility. And this option is, uh, once this Wirelink, as, as you see here, is installed, you can enable or disable it in their provided tool via software called the ACA tool. And this is back in frame. Sorry about that. So as you can see, I have the 50 MHz uh, 68030 with the 50 MHz 68882 um, CPU coprocessor. Um, it has 128 uh, megabytes of RAM. 127 is for system. One megabyte is for uh, the map ROM function. So either you can map the existing kickstart on your Amiga 1200 motherboard into RAM for faster access, or you can use uh, a kick image, in other words, a file off your hard drive, um, and map that to RAM as well, so you can physically use uh, different, you know, kickstart images without having to actually have the physical one on the Amiga 1200, like these ones, which are my 3.2.1 ROMs that I burned recently. A very good operating system, by the way. Much improvement over the 3.1 and even the 3.14 variants. Um, you have a compact flash card, which is very nice, built right into the uh, the board. Um, this gives you very fast uh, compact flash access. Ideally, you would want to use this as your main drive. Um, you can still use the existing um, Amiga, you know, native IDE interface if you desire uh, for other functions as well. You can use it, maybe put a CD-ROM on there, or if you want to, you can put an extra storage device or whatever. It, it is configurable, depends how you want to do it. But ideally, you would want your main system drive, <laughs> sorry, to uh, go in here. And uh, the other note here, there's actually two. There's this one here. This is the header, which you either can use for a real-time clock or any clock port that uh, supported clock port devices such as a subway USB adapter or, or, um, or other devices. And here, um, it's our jumper pins. Right now it's uh, disabled, but you can uh, enable this card to default mode. So basically, if you configure the card through the ACA tool uh, you know, to do something that may be undesirable or you can't get out of, um, you can put it, uh, this jumper back on, power the system back on, you're back to defaults, and then you can reconfigure the software to get everything up and running again. And I might discuss that a bit more detail later. It all depends if I remember. <laughs> but I have unscripted videos, you know. But uh, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want this video to go on too long. So there you have the card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this without the uh, the boot drive. The boot drive right now I have on the, the Amiga uh, main ID interface. So we're going to boot with that, do some tests, and then I'll put that card into this guy here, and we'll go from there. So give me one moment, and I will be right back. Okay, so now we're going to boot from the, as you can see, internal ID interface with the ACA1234 installed into the card slot. The booting process has initiated, proof by the LED, and then the creaky monitor stand. Ah, yes, because it's uh, kind of adjusted weirdly. And as you can see, we have uh, booted up somewhat. Let me uh, adjust this better. I was going to use my screen capture device, but it has failed me recently. Whoa, this is really weird. Okay, let me, that's better. I was zoomed in slightly. Silly me. Let me zoom in a bit more so you get a bit better of the image. Sorry about this angle. So as you can see, the device is completely booted up. And uh, the device, the Amiga 1200, is completely booted up. And you can see there's actually an ACA1234 uh, install disk. This is actually built into Flash ROM. So this is the one that has the uh, 3.1 um, OS installation and the 3.1 ROM available. So that way, if you, if you had, let's say you had a blank uh, compact flash card and it has to be in the uh, ACA1234, it won't do anything. If it's plugged in over on the, uh, like the native Amiga ID interface, it won't recognize it. But if you do have a blank card, plugged into the ACA1234, um, it will automatically boot to, uh, like boot up from this flash, and then it will let you install um, OS 3.1 um, and uh, 
on, on the actual compact flash drive. It'll partition it. I'm not sure what size. I, I can't remember exactly, but it'll make, uh, you know, I think around 100 megabyte partition for the, uh, let's say DH0, the boot drive, and then the remaining, uh, you know, left over will go on to your, uh, you know, the, the partition, the remaining partition will be for whatever data you want to put on there. So pretty straightforward there. So we're going to go to the ACA tool itself. This has all been all pre-configured, obviously. I've done this myself over many days. So there's the ACA tool. Uh, it's version 3.01. So it shows you that I'm running uh, the version 1.9 of the MCU version, so basically the firmware. And uh, the map ROM is off, that's this. So right now, the, even though I'm using the onboard, you can see by the internal ROM, I'm using the, the kickstart ROM on the actual uh, uh, motherboard. But it's not mapped to fast RAM, so I'll get a slight performance hit because of that. But that's uh, what this will do. This will enable you to um, boot, um, basically with your onboard uh, Kickstart ROM into fast memory. And if you also need to use this, if you want to select, like you see right now, it says the internal ROM. Um, I can select between ROM zero, which is the 3.1 ROM that comes with this installation. And I have this one here, I believe is 3.14. And this one here is 3.2.1. Uh, and this one actually is uh, 1.3. They will in the future. I can't rename these. Uh, they don't stick. I'll um, just get out of there, you know, whatever. It, it won't save because you'll find if I go back, it'll just be whatever it was before. But they're, 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 working, they're working on that so that you can actually rename them. And now it, uh, if I actually close this out, sorry about that. I should not press that button here. One moment. Oh, what am I even doing? There we go. Yeah. So yeah, so there you go. But yeah, you, you can't change these names. Even if, if you change them and save it, just go back to, they basically show the ROM size, 512 in that case, and the 1.3, whoops, the 1.3 was actually 256, right? So that that is pretty much that. But uh, so yeah, you can load in several Kickstart ROMs and then uh, switch between them. Now the header, remember I mentioned before, the one that was disabled that will put it back to its default. You need to do it if you do this, because when I boot to 1.3, like when I save this, it's going to boot using the 1.3 ROM. Unfortunately, this utility isn't 1.3 compatible, like OS one, you know, Kickstart 1.3 compatible. So it, it doesn't launch, it just gives an error. So there's no way for me to get back to other ROMs. They won't even use my onboard one. I pretty much have to unplug the card, but that's gonna be useless because I still need to change the settings on the card. So what you have to do is you have to use that jumper. It puts it back to its default. It will boot off of this, and then you can, you know, run this tool and, you know, fix it back to the way it was. Anyway. Kind of went off on a bit of a side road on that one, but I, I apologize. So this is pretty much how it's set up by default. You have the mount install disk, which is this. You have the keep internal IDE, which means keep the you know the native Amiga interface. It's on 1200, and then the uh, mount PCMCIA compact flash cards. This is a very useful feature. I always leave that on. Um, I would actually. This is pretty much how I have it. I have this off, that off, and uh, map ROM. So I, I. I use MapROM and the mounting of the PCMCA compact flashcards. This is usually the setting I use. If I, and the bottom one here is for the instruction cache and chip RAM. That's with that Wirelink mod that we talked about earlier. Some demos have issues um, running properly without having uh, the instruction cache and chip RAM because everything, the basically the 60 or 30 and the, and, and the, and the, uh, the Amiga OS will want to put everything in the fast. And apparently some programs don't like it when the instruction cache is in fast frame solely, so it won't work properly. And they specifically mention a, a, an Amiga scene demo called um, Nexus 7. So we're going to show how that works with or without that. So the Wirelink mod enables me to use this function. Now you don't have to use it if you don't want that compatibility, but this will increase, sorry, increase compatibility. So I will show later on the video of what that demo does. It only takes a couple of minutes. What it does with or without this option enabled, so without the Wirelink mod. And um, another feature too, is this will accelerate the uh, internal IDE access. So right now it's on um, default mode, so basically just off, just running as it normally would without it. And then you can use it in the PIFO mode four. So I'm gonna show you the difference between that. So I'm gonna leave this open. And uh, oh yeah, and by the way, I do have a 68030 uh, at 50 megahertz on that and it's licensed. There is a licensing scheme. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but if you buy like a 25 megahertz processor, you only get a license for that, that for that speed, then you would have to upgrade. Um, I didn't have to upgrade because I bought the full blown 50 megahertz version. So you can, if you don't have enough money right now, you can buy a cheaper version, uh, like a 25 megahertz. Now, 
I'm not sure how they're going to pair that because obviously if you have like a 25 megahertz or 30, it may not be a good idea to overclock it even if you get the license, but I'm not sure how they do that. I can't say too much, but I would say just spend a bit more and get the full blown, you know, 50 megahertz processor. But that's up to you. But like if, you know, you know, it's, it's your choice. But anyways, let's, let's continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the infamous sysinfo. Okay. I'm going to do a quick speed test first. Okay, and as you see, we're getting a healthy point, uh, sorry, a healthy 10.82 uh, MIPS and your MFLOPs are 1.43. And I checked online, I was kind of curious because it's really hard to check the speed of the FPU, but that's pretty much bang on for 50 megahertz, 68882 processor. And what I like about this number is they have a faster memory control around this. So this is letting the 030, like the 68030 running as fast as it can. Most I've seen between eight and a half to nine and a half. So we're not doing bad as far as like uh, 68030s go. So let's go to the drive section. And as you can see, it uses the ACA 1234 flash device, right? And, um, but we don't want that because that's the ACA install. Remember it's on that flash device. This is also the same device that uh, like the flash device. This is um, what it uses obviously for that. And there's a different device once, once we get there, you'll see that it, I think it's uh, for the, um, what you would call it? for the built-in compact flash. Anyways, I digress. Let's continue. I tend to ramble sometimes, I apologize. So we're gonna to go to DH0, which is just the basic SCSI device, the onboard Amiga 1200. And I'm using the um, uh, safe file system, which uh, it works pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on speed and see how fast this is. Okay, we're getting about 1.89. I get either 1.89, 1.85, 1.9. You know what I'm getting at. It's all in, in that area, right? So that, that's megabytes per second. So let us uh, do a quick test. I'm going to turn on the IDE acceleration that this card enables. So I'm not sure what magic they do to get the motherboard to do that, but we shall find out. Okay. So I'm going to turn this on and then click on apply. Now I, don't, I can save it if I want it permanently, but right now I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna click on apply. It's just warning you there might be data corruption. Just make sure you have backups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's fine. I've, I've checked this out before it works. Okay. And you should be fine if you use you know, a reasonably good quality compact flash card. So now I'm gonna go back and run it again. Let's see what a difference we get. We're at roughly 1, 1,890,000 bytes roughly. So let's, uh, let's do a speed test. Okay, not quite double, but healthy. That's a pretty good speed improvement. And just so you make, you know, and I can run the speed test again, and it should be roughly the same. Yep, so let's go back and I'm gonna turn it off. If I can hit the right key combination, if I can hit the right key combination, there we go, I'll turn it off. Now it disables it off and I don't have to apply it, it's already turned off. So I'm gonna go back, as it says right there, I'm gonna go back and run the test again. We should drop back to roughly, you know, 1.8 megabytes per second. Let's see what happens. And there we go. So we know it functions. So I'm just gonna exit out of that and quit this. Okay. So I'm gonna set this card up for when we're gonna, I'm gonna get out of there, just leave the internal ROM. So I'm gonna put turn on map ROM, Make sure that's off. Make sure to keep the internal IDE is off. So I have to make sure I put that boot card back it, like into the um, the actual uh, ACA1234 or nothing's gonna happen. And I'm gonna leave this off for now. We're gonna test out Nexus 7. That's the demo that they specific, sorry, specifically mentioned on their site that uh, was, I guess, the inspiration to get this to work properly with demos, to you know, further increase its compatibility. So when we're done all this, we're gonna check that Nexus 7 demo with the, this off and then enabling uh, instruction cache uh, memory access from Chipnum. So that looks good. I'm gonna click save the card. Okay, but let's do, uh, before we get all this, I'm gonna close that. So map ROM, let's make sure I got this right. That's good, I'm gonna close this here. We're gonna go to AIBB and do a quick test. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, basically turn off the uh, coprocessor math and run the beach ball without it. So this is without the FPU, this is CPU only. It's not the fastest. I think it's around a minute, 60 seconds, maybe a bit less. Um, I'll skip through this and join you at the end.
Okay, we're back. That's where I had to readjust the position of the camera. It was slightly off. And it's almost done. And so was my laundry. And I went to the grocery store as well, so during this time. Of course, it wasn't that bad. So 54 seconds without the FPU. And speed-wise, I, I put the base, uh, the 25 megahertz uh, Amiga 3000 as the baseline for comparison, so we're not even like a third of its speed. And uh, even though we're running at 50 megahertz, because there's no coprocessor involved. So let's turn the coprocessor on and run the test again. So 54 some odd seconds to beat. I'm pretty sure we can do that. And as you can see, it is much, much faster. I really don't have time to do much of anything during this test. And 7.52 seconds. So not too bad. Um, I think these will uh, pick up speed a bit if I have uh, the OS in um, what you would call it fast RAM, and not by much. That more that if you've ever put the OS in fa fast RAM, like the ROM, it usually speeds up more of the graphical and you know um, operations. Than anything else it doesn't really have any effect on raw horsepower. But anyway, not not too bad. So it's uh, pretty good, and like I said, it's a uh, pretty pretty fast uh, system for our 68030. So that is that. But one thing I want to show, I'll go back to the ECA tool again, is one of the neat features of this. Now, I can try not to trip over the tripod because I seem to do that on every episode. My arm is in the way, I know. Sorry about that. Going to uh, insert. So there right now, the compact flash is by default and I'm gonna leave it on, installed. So if I put in a, and basically this is a like a compact flash to, um, you know, PCMI, sorry, PCMCIA adapter. And I'm gonna plug it in here. I have, uh, it's just a partition. I put a bunch of games and stuff on so I don't have to fill up my boot partition and other partitions full of productivity software or wherever. Um, this is taking longer than it should. One moment, there we go. So I'm gonna plug this in any second now without blowing up anything. There we go. Now, as you can see, it has appeared. So that's basically, I believe, uh, how long is the big is that partition? Yeah, that's an eight gig partition, which I bunched, uh, sorry, which I put, yeah, bunched up a bunch of stuff. No, I uh, uh, basically installed, not installed, but copied uh, some demos, w, sorry, WHD load demos, WHD load games, and some, some of my favorite games in there as well. So, um, it acts just like it does. And the beauty of that is, you know, you could use, you know, for file transfers or whatever, like before, but because it's the drivers and all that are on the card, you don't need anything in DOS drivers at all, right? You don't have to have anything in like you do it system devs, uh, DOS drivers. I don't, there's nothing there. I don't, I don't need like a, a CFO device or a compact flash device or anything because the card itself in its, in its, uh, flash RAM has all, everything needed. And it, it obviously does special magical powers to communicate to the motherboard to do that. But one of the, um, coolest things about this is I can actually boot. Right there. See, there's my, uh, let's get that out of the way. Yeah, this uh, cloth here is to prevent shorting out of components since I don't really have anything, um, there's no case, obviously, right? I don't want anything shorting out, but anyway. This boot drive, I can actually put that in here and it will actually boot, I kid you not. And just to show you, one moment, get back up to here. I'm gonna reboot this computer first with the uh, usual control alt delete. I mean, control Amiga Amiga, sorry. PC contamination, one second. Or the three finger salute as they would call it. Okay, and the hold down for the early start menu. I'm gonna pull out this card and go to the, this is like the, the Amiga early startup control. I'm gonna hit the boot options. And as you can see, you see if Aux actually shows up there. You would never see that at all because that anything that you would use to access a compact flash card like through the uh, the adapter would have to be loaded after workbenches like as a DOS driver. So it's kind of cool. It's, it's actually, you know, in the early startup phase. So as you can see, it works fine as a regular data drive. But let's uh, see something interesting. We can actually boot off of this. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go down here and move the camera around so you get dizzy. Oh, sorry. I told you tripod time and I'm going to turn this off. Okay. And I'm going to uh, try not to destroy anything. I'm gonna take, actually, I'm going to take this right off. This whole interface is coming because I'm not, I'm not going to use it anymore. 
So I've already disabled it anyways, right? So that's gone. So that is the boot drive right there. Focus on it with the glare. Um, taking out the that uh, games compact flash, the whole eight gigabytes of WHD load goodness, and putting in the boot drive into here. Somehow, okay. And then I'll walk around the camera and uh, not trip over it. Then I will install this into here. Boop, okay. Success. I'll kind of move this up a bit so I don't tempt fate and make this video shorter because my 1200 will burst into flames. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this on, go into the early startup control, which you can't see because the camera is not pointed at the very highly reflective monitor. And uh, you can see everything on that monitor. Okay, I have my camera's adjusted to the brightness. I have a weird icon on there, so I, the screen, hopefully it's not going to affect the video. So now if I go into boot options, you think it'll be CFOX that it shows in there? No. It's showing the boot partition. And if you look at it, it's, yep, it's the uh, safe file system on the compact flash device. Okay, so that's fine, but can I boot? Yes, I can. Watch what happens. Control, Alt, Delete. I am not doing anything. There is nothing plugged in there. Nothing on the IDE header, and I trust you. You can't see it there, there, but the ACA1230, there is no flash card in there. As you can see, the only devices that are showing up are from the compact flash. So let us go. Let us, let us boot this thing up. Let me... Zoom out a bit, or zoom in a bit. What's happening? There we go, okay. So here we go, I'm going to reboot the computer. So now we're rebooting, compact flash card only, with the bootable device installed. And look at that, it has booted. And one neat, sorry, one neat thing is like, I mean, sorry, everything is like operational, obviously, everything boots, everything works just fine. You know, but now if I go to, um, which we'll call it, sysinfo and do a disk speed test, you'll actually be pretty impressed. Remember, it's, this isn't using any of that, you know, IDE boost because it's not IDE, it's a, it's a compact flash. So this is right through the, uh, through the motherboard, right? So if I go to here and you see it's a compact flash device, click on speed. You can see, you know, 2.2 megabytes roughly, so not bad. And uh, that fucking sucks, Alan, that fuck. Okay, so now we're rebooting. And all that's is booting off is the compact flash adapter. There's no other devices hooked up to this computer, not to the card, not to the motherboard. And it boots away, there you go. And it's uh, not too bad, actually. It seems very responsive. I can run tools like uh, directory opus, Everything seems to load just nicely and stuff. And if I go into sysinfo, you'll see, where are we here? The, uh, the speed isn't too bad. Remember, it's not using any trickery because this is uh, like, you know, the, the IDE speed up uh, that I showed you earlier. This is a compact flash device. It's completely different. So, and it's not even using the IDE interface. So let's do a quick speed test. And not bad, 2.2 megabytes per second. I mean, really, for a compact flash, that's uh, that's faster than the IDE interface. Inter sorry, faster than the IDE interface was. Did I say e twice? Whatever. <laughs> faster than the interface was, um, uh, without the speed up option. So that's not too bad at all. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Nexus Seven, and uh, well, first I'll show you this. Okay. So right now, this is the way it's set up. Map ROM is enabled with the built-in ROM, so the ones you saw on the motherboard, 3.2.1. And of course, this is obviously enabled since it booted off of that. And this is the configuration I leave it in most times. So we're gonna try Nexus 7 without this on. And it only takes a couple of minutes to show you when it messes up. And uh, we'll, I'll show you what it does when we enable the instruction cache in chip mem. Uh, I will get everything ready, let the camera cool off a bit more, and I will be right back. Okay, so hopefully we can get through this without my camera bursting into flames or melting into a puddle of goo. So what we'll do now is we shall run the Nexus 7 demo. And it should be under last played since that was the last one I played and let's go. 
Hopefully I can get some audio to this as well. There we go. Now this is without the instruction cache. This is the whole reason why the Wirelink um, thing was made was to uh, improve the uh, compatibility with demos. This text here should not be flickering like that at all. It looks like kind of really choppy as well. It's not as fluid moving as it should be. So that's the first sign that something is not right with this demo, but it still still works. But I think what's happening is the timing is getting messed up a bit. So it's causing issues with the code. seems to go fine. Not too bad. Turn the volume down a bit. Yes, until I try to edit this, I have no idea how loud this will be. Or not. So this loads just fine, whatever that is exactly. And here the, the ball doesn't seem to bounce as smoothly. It seems like it changes speed a bit. And I think that's part of the problem is the timing is messed up, but still enough for it to function. So like I said, when we're done this, we're gonna enable it. I'll reboot my computer like the instruction cache option for the wire link, and uh, you'll see how much it improves this. And mind you, some, some demos won't even run. So this was trying, making a, it's making an effort. I think it's actually behind now because the music usually goes a bit, you know, with the flashes and all that of the screen goes with the, the screen changes. You can hear the tempo is a bit off. It's speeding up, slowing down. And you'll also will see tearing here in these uh, light beams coming out of the ball. The sad thing is, this is as far as the demo goes. It will stay at this scene forever. Well, at least until you shut the computer off or something else happens. Because I think this part only lasts maybe 14 seconds and it goes on a wee bit more than that. Okay, enough of that. So I'm going to hit F10. See, that should have been a change. It's not. It's just sitting here. So we're going to get out of this. And I'm gonna close this because we have to reboot anyways. I'm going to enable that. And whenever you save this, you'll see it says most settings need to, uh, sorry, need a reset to take effect. Now most it's, uh, I find it's a hard reset, not a soft, so I have to turn the computer off and back on again. So I will be back shortly. Okay, so we have returned and I rebooted with the uh, instruction cache and chip mem enabled. So let's run the demo again and see what differences we have. The fact that it'll actually run properly this time and so on. Okay, here we go. And as you can see, the text doesn't flash or flicker at all. And it, even this seems to move a bit smoother. So does the animation of the letters. So already an improvement is had. So like I said, the timing is now, seems to be, you know, the way it's required for the demo to function. But the proof is in the pudding when we come to the ball of light. Because it uh, should actually get past that. Once it does, success has been had. And I've watched the whole thing, so it, uh, it does work, but you'll see what happens. The differences between the two, of course. And 
due to the speed this thing moves at, it was hard to tell any other, you know, without the uh, instruction cache enabled in Chipmem if it made any difference on this or not. The other scenes, it seemed to definitely mess up the timing. And I keep saying timing because it's always about time. Everything is about time. As you can see the ball, much smoother bouncing and also fluid and consistent. It's not changing speeds, like speeding up, slowing down. That's a bonus. Come to the ball of light. And you can see it's smoother as well. You don't get the tearing and the light beams coming out of this at all. And unlike before, this will actually transition to another scene in about six or eight seconds. Success! And there you go. So this actually continues all the way through without issue thanks to that nice feature that was added from individual, sorry, by individual computers. Excellent. So there we have it. That is a very quick rendition of the capabilities of the ACA 1234. And I, I am a big supporter of their products. I have like, uh, you know, their scan doublers, like the, and uh, un, I bought other versions like the, of their accelerator cards as well. And uh, the, the thing I can say the best about their products, not only the good quality, it's their support. They have their forum, which is accessible, you know, via their, their main page, uh, is, it's impeccable. I mean, they, uh, Jens, which is one of the, the major, uh, you know, guys on the team, uh, him or one of his team members respond pretty much, you know, well within hours of you sending out, uh, you know, any concerns you have about their products or purchases or if you need troubleshooting or, or anything. I, I can't stress of how awesome this company really is. And I really think they're underrated. I, I really do. They, they make awesome products and they have great support. So that pretty much wraps this up. Uh, thank you for joining me and uh, hopefully uh, you liked this video and uh, subscribe please that would be really nice not that i'm begging but more subscribers uh, more the merrier as they always say um if you want to stay after this video i will actually play the entire nexus 7 demo so uh just sit back relax uh, and enjoy and if you decide to leave now uh, like as always thanks for watching Okay, I almost forgot. Uh, let's see the speed of the compact flash card that's inside the ACA 1234. I almost forgot the number of it, <laughs> but anyway. Um, back to sysinfo. So basically there's no nothing hooked up, no compact flash in the PCMCIA slot. There's no, uh, you know, native IDE interface involved right now. It's just the, uh, as we'll see, just, the ACA 1234 device, which is a compact flash adapter built right in the card. So we were getting about uh, 1.88, 1.9 unassisted IDE speed for like for the native. And then we got about what, uh, 3.2, I believe, megabytes per second for the uh, speed boost. So now let's see what it does with the native on board for the ACA 1234. And here we go. Yes, now that's what I'm talking about. That's like double the uh, internal speed and then some of the uh, of the uh, Amiga ID interface on the 1200. All right, again, just for safe measure. And there we go, not bad. And it boots nice and fast and uh, can't really see it through the, the stuff down there, but um, between this cloth and whatnot, but if I reboot it, oop you'll see there's an onboard LED that will flash. There we go, green, apparently. And uh, as you can see, it's, it boots pretty quick as well. Hurry up, not bad. So yeah, so there's a, there's a speed test on the uh, built-in uh, compact flash reader slash writer on the ACA 1234. 
Excellent.